I'm going to talk about these three geopolitical activities going on in the world. There's a plot to kill uh, Vladimir Putin, and Ethiopian federal government delegation, uh, they went to Tigray uh, for the first time. And Fiji deploys military as Prime Minister refuses to concede defeat. Bob Sankarian. Sergei Lavrov, Prime, uh, Russia, as Foreign Minister, says that the United States has the plan to get rid of uh, Russian President Vladimir Putin. And they are working on it. On his word, he says the one who is gone, the farthest of all the others, is in Washington. There are some anonymous officials from the Pentagon who have enunciated threats to deliver a decapitating strike on the Kremlin, which is the assassination of Russian President Lavrov told TASS. He added, if someone really has such uh, ideas, then this someone should think long and hard of the possible consequences of such plans. He says that the U.S. has been transferring uh, satellite and other intelligence data to Ukrainian commanders uh, practically in real time. And at the same time, the planning and conducting, they are planning and conducting military operations in Ukraine. The U.S. denied allegations saying uh, they have no intention to do that. The war continues in Ukraine. They are moving troops towards the Crimea and other settlements in the Luhansk region. According to Luhansk People's Republic uh, leadership, in Ukraine is uh, reinforcing troops in the front line, which are moving to recapture Crimea. And they, are, and they also said they are foreign mercenaries in, and Ukrainian soldiers trained outside Ukraine in the new group of reinforcement where the bloodiest battle of this war is happening. Ukrainian lost uh, over 90 troops yesterday in a confrontation with Russia. Russian leadership claimed that since the start of the war, Ukraine has lost over 200,000 troops in the battle so far. Zelensky is asking his NATO allies to supply him with more weapons because they are running out of them and ammunition, which is making this war more difficult for Ukrainians to win, he says. It looks like uh, Belarus is preparing to enter the war against Ukraine. Putin harmed uh, Alexander Lukashenko, president of Belarus, with uh, several S-400s and Iskander ballistic missiles which war in Ukraine. On September this, uh, 17 December, the air raid siren was sounded across Ukraine after Belarus military fighters took off heading toward the border. Russian commander says that uh, his soldiers are approaching Bakhmut and ready to recapture it, and that Ukrainians are preparing to surrender in Bakhmut to Russia. Ukrainian official says that this is not the case. It is uh, Russian propaganda. He also says that uh, Russia is staging fake executions to discourage Ukrainians from supporting Kiev. And Kazakhstani businesses have donated many first aid supplies to Ukraine. On the other side, uh, Vladimir Putin says that the sanctions did not have any effect on the Russian economy. He also signed a decree banning uh, banning uh, oil supplies to countries that impose a price cap on Russian oil. A group of uh, Ethiopian federal government delegations went to the northern region of Tigray on 26th of December to supervise the execution of the peace agreement according to the, to the Ethiopian government spokesperson. This is the first time um, federal government officials from Ethiopia have traveled to Tigray in more than two years since the armored conflict between them. The leader of this delegation is the Speaker of the House of Representatives, Tagisi Chafo, who is going to meet with the Tigrayans leadership to discuss the, the peace accord implementation. On November 2nd this year, the two parties signed an agreement to stop fighting and this agreement was sponsored by Nigerian, Kenyan, and South African former presidents. 
This consensus involved the disarmament of the Tigray People's Liberation Front, TPLF, and to create a, uh, a joint monitoring personnel to ensure that the agreements are being respected and that peace may prevail. Well, I'm just going to say good job, Ethiopians, and remember you are brothers. Do not let any outsiders, uh, outside enemies, put you against each other. Stay together. It's better for the Ethiopian economy and, and Africa in general. Together, we Africans are stronger. Divided, we are weak. I always remember that. This is the interest of all Ethiopians should always come first, okay? Of a personal aspirations. The former coup leader in Fiji uh, refused to concede defeat in a close election. The Prime Minister uh, Baini Marama, who, to, uh, who hold power for a very long time after seizing it in a 2006 military revolt, is refusing to let go of power after defeat in December 14 election to an opposition coalition led by a former, another former coup leader, uh, Sitiveni Rabuka, which tightly secured a majority seat in the parliament. Baini Marama has refused to accept uh, defeat and is delaying the parliament, uh, parliament meeting to nominate his rival Rabuka. In 35 years, Fiji has seen four coups and a military mutiny. And there's a growing fear the Prime Minister uh, Baini Marama will now allow the opposition to take power, which may provoke a civil war. This is crazy. Power is addictive. And having power over others is very intoxicating. It can make people do crazy things. When they lose it, you know, it happens everywhere. Contrary to believe that uh, it only happens in developing countries. It also happened right here in the U.S. I don't know if you guys remember when former President Donald Trump refused to accept defeat on January 6, 2021. He sent a mob of his supporters to attack the United States uh, Capitol building in Washington, seeking to keep uh, tr uh, they were seeking to keep Trump in power, preventing a joint section of Congress from counting the Electoral College vote to confirm President Joe Biden's victory. It was part of the Trump's plan to overthrow the election uh, after he lost a legal battle, defying the results. Consequently, five people died, killed by the police, force protecting the Capitolium. Many people were injured, including 138 officers, and the four police officers who responded to, to the attack and that day, they killed themselves within seven months. And the damages caused by the attackers surpassed the $2.7 million. So just like you guys see, it happened everywhere, not just uh, in Fiji or in developing countries.